this is Maria from HockeyTrainingPro.com. Today we are going to talk about off-season training, and this really goes whether you're a goalie or a skater. So let's look at your off-season. I just like writing on the board because I feel like a teacher. Here's what your off-season will not include. A chest day. Okay, that has gone the way of the dodo. No self-respecting hockey player has a chest day in their workout. Sorry if you're offended and you're mad now because you love your chest day. But it's just not how high-level hockey players play. Now, if you're just playing for fun, which is awesome, and you like to go to the gym for fun, and one of the big reasons you go to the gym is just to get a bigger chest, then you can have a chest day because it's a little that's like a bodybuilder thing. But if you're really keen on being the best hockey player you can be, take that time you would have just dedicated to your chest training and let's follow an actual proper high-level off-season training program. So there are a couple ways you can do the split. I'm going to name the days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but you could even think of them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and adjust them. So just because I put a workout on Monday and you're like, oh, I have to work all day Monday, I can't work out then, this won't work for me. You know, adjust it to fit your lifestyle. But if we go days of the week, usually we'll do one day as a day off. So let's just say Sunday. Not for religious reasons, just because it's the day off. Um, there's two ways you can do it. One day, one way is to do a full body workout. And I like this for kids that are a little bit uh, younger, like maybe it's your first or second off season training. Um, you know, you're 14, 15 years old, this is okay. Or if you're just really, really busy, because, you know, yeah, maybe you have a, a, a real job or you have a summer job and you just don't have that much time to train. Then you would slot in a full body, FB, full body workout on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or day one, three, and five. With this full body workout, and you're going to really be doing your mobility and your prehab, so your stretches and your um, stabilization exercise, your small muscle exercises, you'll kind of do those pretty much every day. So put in mobility. And again, we'll give you maybe one day off. So this will just be full on off. So we've got full body workout three times a week, mobility workout every day, something to, you know, just your stretches or whatnot. But then we also need to put in your speed training and your stamina training because they're not the same thing and really you can't do them together and do a good job. So we want speed for the most part to be, um, to be when you're freshest. We want it to be as explosive as possible because that's where your speed's going to come from. If you're fatigued, even though you're trying to move fast, but you're moving slow just because your legs are done, then you're not really training speed, are you? So, makes sense, right? We're going to put our speed in on these days when we're not doing full body. We could also put a speed day on Saturday. So, two to three is good. If you're doing a full body workout, either you're a little bit younger, a little less experienced, or you're really busy working. So two speeds for sure, but you could sneak another one in on Saturday. Then your stamina days are gonna go on your full body days. And it's gonna go after your lift. These days are gonna be brutal because you're gonna be working very, very hard in the gym. You're gonna be fatigued coming out of the gym and then you're going to have to do your stamina workout, which stamina workouts are not fun. Um, but that's what lets you play hard from the drop of the puck to the final buzzer. So that's how we would do a full body routine as we go through our off-season training. And again, your training should have phases. So let's say your off-season goes, let's say it's a typical North American off-season. It goes from the beginning of May to the end of August. You should have different training phases. Um, you know, three, four at least. Um, some programs have been using a new type of periodization with our Hockey Strong program here, with our high-level guys here, and it has uh, 
about four or five different phases that we go through. But so, you know, you'll, you'll start off in May building your foundation or what some people call anatomical adaptation. And then you'll go to uh, what is classically called hypertrophy. We call it a functional phase because we do some different things. But that's really the time when you're going to try to add some muscle mass if you need to. I mean, you're going to add it all along. But this is building your foundation. This is trying to build some mass. Then you'll go to uh, max strength. So trying to maximize how much force you can produce with your muscle. Um, and then your last phase would be power, which is where you try to really um, learn how to um, apply that force very, very quickly. That's what makes you explosive. But you have to follow all the steps. Like some of you might be like, well, I just need to be stronger, so I'm just going to focus on this all summer. That is going to backfire because, because if you skip this step, anatomical adaptation, your connective tissue isn't going to be strong enough to sustain the forces that you're trying to put it under. So you're going to get injured is what's going to happen. You're going to feel great for the first six weeks, and then around somewhere between eight and 12 weeks, you're going to start getting whatever, shoulder pain, back pain, some kind of problem. So now you're, now you're at the beginning of August and, and you have an injury, and your camp is in the middle of August or the end of August. So you're in, you're in big trouble now. So you have to follow the steps as we go along. And it's the same whether you do a full body split like this or whether you do an upper lower split, which I'm going to show you next. Okay, so this is, notice there's still no chest day. Um, notice there's still no um, um, back and biceps day. Um, there's no shoulder day. Okay, just make that clear. Here are days a week. They again could just be numbers. We're gonna do uh, lower body. This is what we do with our professional guys. Upper body, and then sometimes we make this uh, just like an individual day. So whatever it is they need to work on. If they're, if they're a professional player who's a little bit older, they're later in their career, late 20s, early 30s, this might really be a recovery day for them. But it'll be an individual day. Then we'll go lower body, upper body. And then on Saturdays, um, we do sort of a long duration interval, well, medium duration interval. Um, but this is our hill, hill workout. Um, but again, it, it could be, oops, okay. It can be it's some type of interval workout. It only lasts about 45 minutes, so it's intense, but it's rather relatively short. Uh, and then we make one day just an off day. And again, that even our professional guys take a day off. They can do their stretches, whatnot, but they don't they don't train that day. It, it's just more is just more. It's not better. So we have lower body, upper body, lower body, upper body, and then um, with our lower body again, we're going to put our stamina. So again, our legs are a little bit tired, but this is more about grinding it out, more about working our heart and our lungs and how they deliver the um, energy to our working muscles. It's more about that system. The speed is really about those muscles firing as fast as they can, as powerfully as they can, as explosively as they can. So we want them to be pretty fresh. So it's okay if we tack that on after an upper body workout. And both of these, include core like we don't really do like a core day it's it's the way we train is a functional style there's no you know there's no leg press no hamstring curl no knee extension everything they do is really using their torso um, it's more functional like the way an athlete trains so again this will be stamina this will be speed this is our heel workout we don't do it every single week because it's a lot of pounding, so we, we kind of go two on, one off, two on, one off. Uh, the individual, this could be if they've had injuries in the past. It could be doing some specific prehab exercises for that. If they, um, if they were carrying a little bit too much body fat, this might be a different kind of energy system workout. It might just be 20 or 30 minutes long, but targeting dropping some body fat. Um, if even if it's somebody who's trying to add muscle mass or some of our guys just still really want to do a beach workout, 
this is where I would put that beach workout in and, and I would let them do biceps curls and tricep press. I would still design that workout because I don't want it to be so much volume that they show up on this day dog tired, but that's a day we would let them do that. Um, for some guys, this will be uh, what we call a category two workout, which really would be probably one of the only times uh, outside of an injury that we'd have somebody ride a stationary bike or an elliptical or just go for a roller blade. This is a low intensity, steady state workout, and which sounds a little weird because we don't do many of those. Um, and it might be 20 to 40 minutes um, at a relatively low heart rate, like 130 beats per minute or lower. And it's really just to try to increase capillary density, which capillaries are, you know, just the little teeny blood vessels that, that take blood into the muscle. Um, so it's just kind of working the heart and lungs and the muscles, trying to improve that network. That, that's all that it is. And, and it's sort of a nice, relaxing, fun workout for them. So those are the two ways that we split up our off-season training, upper lower split, or that three day a week full body workout. Everybody gets one day of rest. So that gives you a little roadmap. Uh, if you want a step-by-step -step program, I guess more information below, but this at least points you in the right direction, or you can compare it to what you are planning on doing this off season and see, well, does that jive? Am I on the right track? Yeah, that's exactly what I had mapped out. I'm good to go. This is Maria from hockeytrainingpro.com. Don't let your off season slip away. Get in there, start building, follow those phases I talked about, make it your best off season ever. That's going to lead in to your best hockey season ever.